So similar to the normal common emitter stage after finding the gain, we need to actually find out what is the Z in and Z out. Okay, so we're going to follow the same uh, procedure for calculating these parameters. So for Z in or like the R in, the input resistance or input impedance, um, I connect this V test or VX and I have this IX and I want to try to find the relationship between them, right? To do that, I'm just going to write a KVL. So I'm going to say plus VX. Um, actually, it has to be small VX. So plus VX minus R pi times IX minus R E times, let's say that this is I E times I E, I get zero. So VX minus R pi I X minus R E. And now let's see what, what I can write for I E. I E is the addition of I X coming from the base side and then plus G M V pi is equal to zero. This, uh, this means that V X is equal to R pi I X plus R E times I X plus G M and then instead of V pi, I'm going to write R pi times I X, just Ohm's law, right? And now I see that GM R pi can be replaced with beta. So this is going to be equal to R pi I X plus R E times I X plus beta I X. That's beta plus one I X. Okay. So therefore V X over I X is going to be R pi plus beta plus one times R E. Okay, let's make an observation here. Now, comparing normal CE and CE with degeneration or degenerated CE, I noticed that, well, in terms of biasing, uh, the normal CE is worse. But in terms of gain, normal CE had higher gain. Now, in terms of input impedance, I can see that the degenerated CE, the second version, the variation of CE, is actually much better in terms of input impedance. Okay, so with the normal common emitter stage, I had just an R pi as the input impedance. Now I have beta plus one, a huge number times R e plus R pi. So my input impedance is going to be much greater than before. So this tells me that well things are not that bad, right? So if I want to compare CE versus CE that is degenerated. In terms of uh, biasing, this guy was better. In terms of gain, this guy was better. And now in terms of Z in, again, another point toward the CE with degeneration. Okay, I'm not doing these kind of uh, comparisons to to really tell you that sometimes you have to actually make a decision between going with this one or the other one. It's just that to, to kind of like summarize what we have talked about up to now and to somehow like organize your thoughts on uh, basically how do these these two compare and then like you might actually wonder from time to time that why we are even bothering with this kind of stage when we when it has much smaller gain than normal CE. Well, these are the reasons, right? It's better for biasing. It gives us more practical and less sensitive biasing. It also has a higher input impedance that could help as we see as we have seen before. Higher input impedance sometimes is like as important as gain because overall, if you have a low input impedance, your overall gain, your effective gain might be actually uh, attenuated by a lot. So this might actually compensate a little bit the smaller gain of this stage. Okay. Uh, one very common mistake and again, very annoying mistake that I've seen people do is that the, the moment that they see, let me actually erase all these annotations here. The moment that they want to actually write KVL on this path, they somehow, for some weird reason, they think that this resistor and this resistor are in series. So they just say, well, the input impedance or input resistance is R pi plus R E. While we know from electrical circuits, two resistors are in series when they have the same current flowing through them. While we just saw that this one has I X flowing through it, and this one had beta plus one I X flowing through it. So there's no way that these two are in series. And by the way, notice that emitter had beta plus one times more current than I than base, which was something that we could have actually expected without writing all these expressions. But that aside, uh, we can see that they're not in series, right? 
in fact we could make them in series with a little trick we could say that um, if vx is equal to r pi ix plus r e times beta plus 1 ix i might think that if these two were in series meaning that they had the same current ix through them it's as if that i had r pi in series with a r e times plus beta plus 1 resistance right it's not the r e that is in in series with r pi it's the beta plus one times re that is in series with r pi and that's the point of this circuit that i've drawn here for you so you could say and that's what i've written here the above observation is articulated as follows any impedance tied between the emitter and ground is multiplied by beta plus one when you quote unquote seen from the base when it is seen from the base so when you're looking from the base if you have a resistance re and that remember from the previous slides you might have actually realized by now that that one re resistor is not really always one just a single resistor that represents anything that is connected to uh to the emitter between emitter and ground right so that resistor if i want to bring it and place it in the base and make it in series with r pi i have to multiply it by beta plus one now you can actually say these two are in series and looking into the circuit now you can see that r in for this circuit is again r pi plus beta plus one re so that's one of the tricks that people a lot of times use so that they can avoid writing all of this stuff so the trick is that when when you're looking into the base you're going to see r pi and beta plus one times whatever is in the emitter between emitter and ground right and then the other way around is also correct we're going to talk about that when we're talking about common base that when you're looking into the emitter you see the all the resistor in the emitter plus whatever you see in the base divided by beta plus one but let, let let's wait for that discussion to happen in the common base stage for now this is the most important thing i want you guys to remember that you don't have to actually write all these expressions to figure out what is the input impedance once you actually see that you have a circuit like this you have an rc the bjt device you have an re and you have you want to find out what is the resistance looking into here well the resistance is going to be r pi plus beta plus one times re now if instead of re i had re in parallel with some rx that is added to some i don't know ry then this would have been re in parallel with rx plus ry so whatever you have between the emitter which is this node and ground you find the combination of all of these stuff you multiply that by beta plus one and then add that to r pi and that's your input impedance looking from the base okay so remember i summarized the resistance looking into base looking into emitter looking into collector there's one other um basically case that is that should be added to that slide which is the resistance looking into the base because r pi was there when there was nothing on the emitter looking into the base we, all, we saw r pi when there was nothing in the emitter but if there is something in the emitter this is how you write the resistance okay so it's going to be uh basically r pi plus beta plus one times all r in emitter okay i hope this makes some sense okay so based on the discussions from the previous slide solving this slide is going to be very easy the question is asking us find the voltage gain for the circuit below and then well we could actually also think about finding the input resistance um, let's say let's say the question was asking us let's, let's solve a simpler question let's say that the question was asking us what is the input resistance looking into here well the input resistance would have been um, i would say let's call this some r uh, base looking into the base well i have an rb in the circuit so let's call it a different thing let's call this r in two right so r in two I already know its expression it's going to be r pi plus um, beta plus one times r e therefore i can easily say that r in is going to be 
uh, RB that is in series with that R in two, right? Because again, when I say that I'm looking into so this kind of a expression or this kind of a notation, looking into the base, it means that if I want to replace whatever is after this point or looking into the base on the right of right side of this this line that I'm looking at, uh, if I want to replace all of that with a resistor to ground, what would be that resistor? And then I just figured out that resistor is going to be R in two, and it's the expression is this. So and now we can see that if I replace all this circuit that is inside this green box with that one resistor, that resistor is going to be in series with R B, right? Basically, my circuit is going to look like V in R B, and then R in to to ground, right? That's why if I want to find what is the resistance looking into here, which is my R in. Then my R in is going to be just R B plus R in two, so it's going to be R B plus R pi plus beta plus one times R E. Okay. Now that we've solved this, let's solve the actual question. That is, what is the voltage gain? Now, if if I want to find the voltage gain, I'm going to do it in two steps. So let me actually erase all this stuff. I'm going to do it in two steps. I'm going to find, I'm going to say that V out over V in is equal to V out over V A, and A is here at the base, right? Times V A over V in. Okay? So I didn't do anything related to circuits, it's just a mathematical expression. Uh, X over Y is equal to X over Z times z over y and then v a is cancel and then get the same v out over v in why did i do that because i know the answer to v out over v a because i know that the difference between this circuit and a normal common emitter with degeneration is that in that case i have v in connected to here right there is no rb so again i'm using that method that i i'm trying to use the gain of a circuit that i know and then simplify my question and like kind of avoid doing this stuff that I'm too lazy to do it, right? So V out over V A is going to be, well, the gain that I know, it's going to be negative R C over one over G M plus R E. And that's it, right? Halfway done. What about V A over V N? Well, look at this. Look at this circuit here. This is my V A. Can you tell what is V A over V N? Yeah, it's a voltage divider. It's a R in two over rp so my gain is going to be negative rc over one over gm plus re times what was r in two it was r pi plus beta plus one times re and what is rb i'm sorry rb plus r in two that's the voltage divider so this would be rb plus r pi plus beta plus one times r e so it's a really big expression if somebody sees that this expression and uh if i told you in the beginning of this slide that this is going to be the gain that we are going to find you might have thought that well we're going to be here in this slide for half an hour now you saw that like how small uh, how small of an analysis we need to do and how, how little we need to do and how how quick this could be actually found okay and the reason is that i'm just using the um, my knowledge of basically known circuits and trying to actually find the relationship between the circuit in hand and the circuit that I know about it, right? So by using just this trick here, I could find the gain very quickly.